you're a non-farmer, we just want you to understand that farmers are doing everything they can to provide safe food for our country and really for our planet. But in addition to that, one of the most important things that farmers are doing today is everything they can to manage nutrients so water pollution is not an issue. We want and need clean water in our country. We want to talk today about what farmers are doing to keep that water clean. There are two key nutrients that are really of most interest here when we're talking about water quality. We're talking about nitrogen and we're talking about phosphorus. Now that may seem like one issue to most non-farmers. To farmers, they're two completely different things and we'll explain why. All right, first of all, when it comes to nitrogen, there are a couple different forms in the soil. There's ammonium nitrogen that does not leach, and there's nitrate nitrogen that does leach. And by leach, what I mean is it moves through the soil profile with rain. Well, with nitrate, since it can leach, in lighter soils, what can happen is that nitrate can move all the way down and end up in the water. That's obviously not a real great thing. Now, when I say that, please understand, all water has some level of nitrate in it. The drinking water quality standard in the United States is 10 parts per million of nitrate nitrogen. So in other words, the government has deemed it safe when you're at 10 parts per million or less. And when you look back at the scientific data that led to the government deciding on that number, you'll find that the number is actually quite a bit higher. The only reason the number is that low is just to be on the safe side. And also they obviously do get concerned about babies. As adults, we could withstand lots of nitrate, not a real big concern for us, but nevertheless, we want to make sure that the water is always at 10 parts per million of nitrate nitrogen or less. So farmers look at their soil test values to determine how much nitrogen their soil can hold and when they should be applying that nitrogen. They also look at the crop growth stages to see the uptake of the crop so they can time those nitrogen applications to parts of the year where that crop is going to be growing rapidly and using up lots of nitrogen quickly. Very specifically, and you can do this even for your lawn, take a soil test, look at cation exchange capacity, multiply that number times 10. That'll tell you roughly how much nitrogen your soil can hold at any one time. That's a really good thing. In addition, you want to look at soil organic matter. If you have a higher level of organic matter, your soil can actually hold some negatively charged things, which it normally can't do but it can hold negatively charged things like nitrate, at least to some degree. So cation exchange capacity, organic matter in the soil, those are two keys to nitrogen holding. Well, speaking of nutrients holding to the soil, phosphorus is an example of a nutrient that generally binds pretty tightly to the soil. So if we can keep the soil in our fields, typically we can keep the phosphorus in our fields too. So if we've got phosphorus getting into water, oftentimes it comes from soil erosion. Phosphorus is actually the number one water quality issue in fresh water today. A lot of the phosphorus that does end up in water, unfortunately, comes from cities, whether that's water treatment plants, sewage treatment plants, just people who are applying way too much phosphorus, way more than what goes into the soil. Those are all certainly considerations. On the farm, what we have to try to do is two things. Number one, reduce or even completely prevent soil erosion and soil getting into water. And number two, place phosphorus just a little bit deeper in the soil. Again, because phosphorus doesn't really leach, we don't have to worry about phosphorus going down. I mean, sure, if you way unbelievably overdo it in sand, then it could possibly leach. But in normal soil and under normal conditions, there's no possible chance phosphorus is ending up down in the groundwater. But where it can be a problem, again, is that soil erosion. One other thing that I wanted to mention here, when we talk about nitrate movement in the soil, a lot of non-farmers read things in magazines and newspapers, that type of thing, saying, well, tile is bad, tile is causing this problem. No way. What studies have found is that actually there's less nitrogen moving off a field when there's tile there. And the reason why is because when rain falls, it can soak in the ground when there's tile there, when there's a reservoir for water to go down. So there's less total nitrogen leaving the field. Sure, nitrate can go out through the tile line, but most of the time what we find is the nitrate levels are very low, certainly within that drinking water standard of 10 parts per million. So my point is, Yes, nitrogen can be a problem coming out tile lines, and farmers really have to manage nitrogen a little bit better over tile lines, but for the most part, that is not the big problem in our country. Oh, one other thing too, Brian. Boy, we're gonna to talk about this quite a while here because it is such an important topic. 
the hypoxia zone in the Gulf of Mexico. This is one of the areas that draws a lot of attention and farmers often get blamed for, oh, it must be nutrients coming off fields that are causing this. Well, look, anytime fresh water is gonna meet salt water, there's going to be a zone of hypoxia. That's the way it is. So a few years ago, I went to a conference down at Iowa State University in Ames. And I heard, I listened to a speaker talk about this for an hour and the zone of hypoxia and what farmers need to do, what cities need to do, what everybody needs to do to reduce that zone of hypoxia, which is all great. But my question didn't get answered. So afterwards I went up and asked my question. I said, it looks like you have records going a long ways back about the size of this zone of hypoxia, right? And they said, yep, we do. Back roughly about 100 years. And I said, okay, well, let's say about 100 years ago, how big was the zone of hypoxia? They said, well, it's actually about the same size as it is today. <laughs> I said, well, what are we even talking about this for? Before 100 years ago, we didn't have tile. We didn't have nitrogen getting applied to fields, all this other stuff. Yet the zone of hypoxia really hasn't changed. So my point is, it's the mainstream media that's driving a lot of this thing saying, oh, farmers are doing this bad job in the zone of hypoxia and everything else. It's always been there. Get over it. We're going to have a zone of hypoxia whenever fresh water is going to meet salt water. So sure, we as farmers need to do everything we can to manage the nutrients in our fields. But understand that even if we did everything perfectly, there's still going to be that zone of hypoxia down in the Gulf of Mexico. When it comes to protecting water quality, it's a very, very important thing for farmers. Farmers are most concerned about nitrogen and phosphorus, keeping them in their fields. They'll do that by understanding their soil properties, timing out those applications to match up with crop nutrient uptake, and then protecting from soil erosion as well. Water quality is very important to farmers, so is weed control. We'll show you how to stop this weed later in the show. <music>